Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, super important topic. Many of you may have been following along with um, Brick's Future of Work series, uh, where we talk about the uh, some of the critical financial workflows uh, and how technology and AI will impact those workflows. One of the things that we, we wanted to be sure to touch on as well, is not just the future of companies and the future of work, but also the future of people. So today we're going to dig with Cal Beyer, uh, a, a well-known uh, personality and, and influencer in, in this space. Uh, so we're super happy to have you, Cal. Thanks for joining us. To so great to see you, Alice. Um, for those um, that, that may or may not know you, um, could you please give us a, a brief overview of uh, and, you know, background on your um, expertise in the people space in construction? Yeah, thank you so much. And I'm excited to be here. We've got the white paper that we're going to be launching as well that we've done with Brick on human capital risk management and kind of a business case for the human side of business. This ties perfectly to your future of work. For 35 years almost, I've been a risk management, safety, health, and wellness practitioner. I've intersected very closely with HR over many years. I've done a lot of work, as you know, through the Construction Financial Management Association. And starting back in 2002, I was partnering with them on a series of programs. The first one was like safety in the bottom line. And my safety colleagues all thought I sold out. I was putting a dollar value on human life. But we ultimately looked at the business challenges and found humans were at the core of everyone. So this idea around human capital risk management, it spread the gamut. And ultimately, Alice, you know, it evolved into the Workplace Mental Health Initiative post-Hurricane Katrina. And that morphed into the Suicide Prevention Initiative. And now you know the work I'm doing with opioid risk reduction because that is the current challenge impacting construction. But all of this is grounded in people. And the idea of human capital risk management, people are our core strategic asset. And if we take care of our people, they'll help us take care of the business. And a good, inclusive, caring culture is the foundation for human capital risk management. A hundred percent. And so many so many companies and contractors, you know, have have spent decades um, not only, you know, bringing in young folks to join the construction industry and to foster their development to become the professionals that they are. And um, I, I think that's this part. We talk as a technology company, you know, we talk so much about the um, kind of some of the it feels inhuman sometimes, but even technology, right, is um, used by people. It's fostered by people. Um, and, and in the construction space, it's so important to talk about how people and technology interact. One of the things that we see, Cal, happening as we've gone through this Future of Work series is people's roles in the business will be will be impacted. And I think, you know, one of the, you know, we talk, you know, we talk about the opioid, opioid crisis, you talk about, uh, you know, veterans returning and working in the field. Yes. Um, people, people's roles give them purpose and meaning. And if that you know, changes. Um, and if automation comes in and says, hey, look, you know, your role has been to, you know, maybe it's been to do data entry for 10 years. Suddenly with automation, that changes, right? What is your role? What is your purpose in a business when the things that you do, you do every day change? Um, so talk us through kind of from your perspective. We've spoken, you, you know, we've spoken offline about this. How do you see in this, in the, the future of work, how do you see the, the, the people, you know, people's role changing and what impact that, that might have on them? Well, we know from ancient Roman and Greek cultures, the only constant is change. That one's attributed to someone named Heraclitus. Uh, but that only constant is change. That is the new normal. This post-pandemic world continues to be very stressful. There's rising workforce risks in society, but also impacting the workplace. And so if we have this ability to know our business is going to change, we can be intentional about how we frame and structure, communicate and implement and execute that change. I think it's taking that human touch. I love this series. When you told me about it, I was like, please, please invite me. So thank you. I think what's important to recognize is that change 
frequently gets catastrophized. It gets doomsday. There is a lot of negativity associated with change, and it doesn't have to be that way. So yes, some workforce changes and workplace changes will be stressful, and it could show up in mental health impacts on employees. It could be shown as anxiety and worry. It could be apprehensiveness. It could be resistance to change. It could be frustration. It could show signs of exhaustion or burnout if people are holding on too hard to the past and not adapting to change and waiting to the last minute to embrace it. So at the individual level, you can see those personal touches. At the team level, you can see that through conflict and infighting. You can see that through morale. You can see it through competition. So the important thing is that recognize change can have a human, individual, and team impact. Build change to be intentional so we're communicating up front. And then recognize not everyone will be impacted equally by that change. So a couple of ideas. Like, I think we've become so much more intentional about building in wellness and well-being. So well-being is that intersection between physical and emotional health. You could double down on a wellness program months in advance of an expected change initiative. A um, couple of things, Alice, and I'm going to stop and I can go back in to a deeper dive. But I think you would work with HR and also an employee assistance program if you have one to help you design a communication strategy and a focus on that wellness aspect. I'm seeing more companies do warm-up exercises, doing workstation ergonomic assessments for proper fit to the workstation, equipment uh, allowances for home office improvements so people are comfortable mm -hmm. in that workstation. I'm seeing EAPs offer apps like Calm and others mm -hmm. to help employees with that stress management. So that's one foundation. Yeah, and I think you know the other the other side of this is you know I mentioned people want to have purpose in their role, um, and you know I think another thing we've seen is training um, additional training on some of these new technologies, right? You know if 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 the tools that, you know if if the my trade as someone in this in the back office, if you will. Um, changes, I need to learn the new tools of that trade. So things around AI and automation, you know, could also help to bring, um, you know, kind of help to set folks in that role towards a path of developing their own skill sets as well. Ellis, more reason to involve HR up front. Yeah. Look at them beyond their traditional roles of talent acquisition and compensation benefits and payroll use them for right. ideas on change management, if not change leadership communications, but then this idea of learning and development. What we've seen over the last decade is this movement towards strengths. We used to focus on gaps and weaknesses and try to close those gaps. But HR today is focusing on what they call the employee experience. It's driving more engagement when employees believe in the work, they understand the importance of that work, focused on the why this work matters, why their job matters, why they matter to the company. So being intentional about affirming the value of individuals, recognizing that change is going to have possible impacts. And then this idea around human learning. I have seen concerns expressed that most of this training with AI is going to be AI driven, it's going to be chat right. driven. That's freaking some people out, um, right. myself included initially. <laughs> sure. I think what we can do is do the human side. Do you have individuals who have been early adopters who are ready to teach their teammates? And that gives some recognition opportunities. It gives the collaboration and it builds uh, that sense of team. The last kind of thing I'd like to highlight there is I think reinforce micro learning. We're hearing so many people look for micro learning. So two to five minutes, individual skills, and the learning focused on practical applications and pilot projects, I think can make a big difference. It shows people this is going to make things better. This isn't for no reason. And um, 
ground this in reality whenever you can. Well, you know, it's funny. The, the One of the roles that will be impacted, the future of work, is that HR function, right? And if you're in a you know, contractor today and maybe you're you know, a framing contractor going, hey, look, I don't have time to train, you know, to focus on well-being. I've got to get payroll out the door every single week, right? I think one of the things you'll see is a lot of those tasks that a technology like automation brings <clears> – <throat> is automating away some of these mundane tasks to free people up to do more valuable things. And if you look at that HR function, well, suddenly, if you're auto, you know, you're able to automate some of these things away that you and they might do on a day-to-day basis, your future could, now you have time and you've opened up, you know, uh, your, your, the, your capacity to take on some of these initiatives, micro learning, wellness checks, um, you know, training, uh, AI driven or not. Um, I think that's a really interesting point you make is, you know, what is the role, the role of the HR function of the people function will play a very important part of this, of this future. Yeah. We know like in technology, construction has really emerged to embrace the power of technology and look at the success your company has had in particular, but also look at HR. It has evolved from personnel functions and payroll to human resources, to professional business partners, to this idea around human capital management. This is just the next iteration of change. And this idea of using AI to offload those, you use the word uh, mundane, I was gonna use the word redundant. And I almost invented a new word there, (laughs) combining the two. Yes, I think we should all see opportunities uh, not just potential drawbacks in AI. I think. Yeah, I, and I, I think you know. It's, it, go ahead. Sorry, finish, sorry. Finish your thought. I just look at the future, and I'm excited. I don't know what it all holds and what it's going to entail, but we can embrace this as a positive and really see a lot of ripple effects that could impact all of our jobs for the better. Yeah, for the better. And I think that's an important mentality to take about the future of work is is to have that future positivity, right? And I, I think certainly there are things to be concerned about when it comes to how technology will impact my role and, and my business. Um, but I think it's important generally to have a have that positive, that positive outlook that things will change, but for the better. Um, yeah, I couldn't absolutely. agree more. So let's do this. Um, we, you, you kind of lightly touched on some of some of these themes, um, and, and I'd love to dig in a little bit deeper, right? Um, if you think about like holistically about the people role uh, in construction, and, and in particular, it's the the future of the people role. I kind of think about a puzzle, right? There's there's pieces that fit as a puzzle. Um, can you can you walk us through what some of those pieces are and how you see um, the the kind of the people? Uh, landscape, if you will, um, around this this issue. Yeah, I love that analogy. When you and I were talking, we both glommed on to this puzzle idea. It clicked. It yes. clicked. And I saw you light up and I was like, okay, I'm not the only one thinking this way. So I think like we talked a lot about the importance of understanding why that change and doing a reality check. Like too often people jump into change without the forethought. And I think one of the successful hallmarks of construction projects is pre-planning. This is the same opportunity to pre-plan. What are our goals? What are we looking to accomplish? And being very thoughtful about AI as an instrument of that change and how that can drive that process. I think focus on that strengths idea rather than gaps, and then look at a capabilities forecast. If this is the direction our business is going, Do we currently have the right skills? And if not, can we retrain? Can we reskill? Upskill is a word I've heard you use previously. So Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Do we need to hire a specific skill set? And do we have the opportunity and time to get people specialized training? So that's all one, that reality check, the preparation. I think the second, you've heard me talk about this idea of change leadership. In the old days of risk management, I defined myself as a risk leader. I felt there were too many people 
that were managing risk, not enough leading it. And so it was too easy for people in managing to say no. I learned to say yes to risk. If you understood, there's risks and rewards. I think the same is true on the change leadership side. Focus on the people. You have to worry about the process details, but use KPIs that are key people indicators, not only yeah. key performance indicators. And I think looking at this holistically is probably one of the most important things that we can do to drive this process of uh, a smooth transition. I think if we think about other pieces of the puzzle, you and I talked about culture. I mm. came into construction and everyone said, cash is king. And for years I tried to emulate that in this human capital risk management. But what I've seen, culture is king. Culture is trumping strategy. Peter Drucker said it best years ago and it's proven regularly. This is gonna be a war on talent most industries don't have enough people. Yes, there could be some shuffling of the deck, but we can go forward. The companies that are focused on culture, people first, people centric, people purposed, are gonna win that war. They're gonna have less turnover. They're gonna keep key performers. They're gonna have opportunities for productivity. They're gonna have other um, big measures. I think the collaboration is gonna be better for problem solving. And then we've already talked about learning and development. I think we both agreed that would make our top five in a puzzle. Totally. And I think the last one, if I had to pick one, it would be for me, communications. I find mm -hmm. that is an area when we start change, we start strong communications, but a regular cadence of updates reduces stress, manages the buy-in, overcomes resistance, shows the progress being made. And when you're celebrating small wins, that changes momentum. It puts wind in the sails and it lets others know this isn't going away. I got to get on board or here's where I can contribute. So those would be like those, we were calling them mega themes. We were calling them pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. You know, I think when you, when you look at and you say, how do I prepare my people for the future, right? There was preparing your, your business for the future um, really is preparing your people for the future. In a lot of ways, you know, I look at this list, our reality check, are we ready? That cannot just, it's not just applied to <clears throat> your people. It's a, it's part of the business. Is my company ready? Um, and I think if you think about any change that is constant, um, you know, we talk about it all the time. It's like, hey, is your company ready for the um, to embrace technology? Um, and is it ready for the changes that a, that are rapidly approaching with AI and automation? And we ask that question of companies all the time. Are you ready? Doing that reality check. And, you know, Cal, we hear sometimes companies say, no, we're not ready. No. You know, I mean, it's I, I think it's okay to not be ready. Um, if you're a company and you and you're not sure if you're ready or not, what what advice would you give to a leader to to evaluate if they are ready or not? Yeah, I like this idea of that capabilities forecast, right? Like, do I have the right skills? Because even training takes time, and if hmm. we're in the midst of change and the workplace hasn't fully rebounded in the post pandemic, we still have organizations with hybrid work. We have some that are not having the flexibility available to workers. There's still some frictional points. And so I think first and foremost, it's doing that honest assessment. You know, if we're not ready, why? Is it resources? Is it competing demands? Do we need extra skill sets? Find the right partners who can guide you in that process. So whether it's a change management consultant, it's a business process improvement consultant, Maybe it's uh, your trusted advisor from your um, CPA business advisory service. Maybe it's working with partners like Brick and others to help you with that assessment and then identify alternatives. That's where the risk management model here. One of the strategies of risk management is identifying alternative pathways and then select the one that best fits. That fits your resources, your goals, your time frame. And it's okay to make initial investments, 
and then to scale or ramp up, right? And I know you've done that with many of your customers that I've gotten to know over the years. Let people take baby steps. So that's part of being realistic. If you bite off more than you can chew and then you're frustrated or the project fails, you're not gonna feel good about it. There's many paths to success. 100%. I love the idea of a capabilities forecast, right? Which, you know, looking at, hey, what are the skills that, what are the skills that my people need in five years, right? I think that's a really important kind of um, assessment to do and take inventory of that and and to really stop and think about that. Um, you know, I think talking about change leadership, you know, we think about, we hear change management so, so often, uh, which can be scary and disruptive at times. Um, I love the concept of change leadership because it is that idea of saying, hey, look, here, you know, here's the vision of what the future will look like based on, you know, from a people perspective. And here's what we need to do to get our people to that point. Um, and I think we get so much, we should get so bogged down in the, the change management, we forget about the change leadership aspect of it. Ellis, it's so cool. It's one of the things I've done in my career when I worked for large uh, insurance organizations. They would have mergers, they would do realignments, they would reshuffle the deck periodically. And almost in every case, I was one of those ambassadors of change and the integration. And so people follow leaders in those change that they trust. And that human touch that you're talking about in this future of work, we were subtitling this the future of people. And this idea of that inclusive, caring culture that gives people that forward looking or future looking like you use is the right path. And people are embracing that. They're recognizing that we can do more together. And it takes that pressure and stress off individuals. So this idea of change leadership, I think, was one of the funnest um, aspects for you and me to uh, dis discuss. Oh, absolutely. And I think it goes you know, to your point about culture. I think you know, it's one of the things that we see with you know, I get, I get questions all the time, actually, about, um, you know, hey, what, what do the most successful customers at Brick do, right? What, what, is, what makes them successful with Brick? And I say, well, it's the same thing that makes them successful with anything is they, they come in with, they always come with really strong values. And I, I love working with um, contractors who have sat down and really spent time on, on their values. And I, I agree. I think, you know, culture trumps strategy. It's something that when, you know, we, when we were founding a brick, yes. you know, we're five years old. One of the very first things we did was we put, we wrote our, our, our values down, our cultural values, right? Build, own, evolve, go fast and win and just say it, right? Those are really important to us. And when I see companies that um, have really sat down to think about their values, yes. those are the ones that I've always found, you know, really um, can not only, you know, have a vision for what the future is, but also the people they have execute on that well. Ellis, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, probably 300 different construction companies across the country as a consultant and as a speaker and um, other capacities. I always looked for three V's when we were selecting, is this a good fit for us? It was vision, values, and vigor. And mm -hmm. um, if that company had those three things, I usually got goosebumps. I was so excited to be able to work with companies that were that much clarity. And then as I really transitioned into this holistic well-being and focused on workplace mental health, it wasn't an accident. I had another three Vs and it was leaders who were um, driving this uh, process. It would be visible, vocal, and vulnerable. And I think those three really go hand in hand and that's the essence of change leadership. The leaders who are visible and vocal about change and then vulnerable. Hey, I'm nervous too. This is a big investment. This has a lot of impact. I care about you as people. I care about our teams. I don't want this to disrupt our relationships and especially with our customers as well. So if we are in this together, we can get to the next side. And we're going to do that because we're strong. We're a team. I believe in you and we appreciate all your efforts at this organization. It sounds hokey, right? But that's the reality of what people are looking for. They want that employee experience. They want to be acknowledged. They want to be affirmed. And who doesn't like a little pat on the back, a recognition for a job well done? Oh, again, it comes down to, you know, my purpose 
um, in the business and and um, the value I'm bringing to this organization, right? That's ultimately what I think, you know, certainly speaking personally, but that's what people want. They want to be, feel like they are, are valued in the business and that they're having an impact um, on the strategy as well. To me, it's huge. That's that essence of that employee experience, finding purpose in your work and have an alignment with the core values and that vision of the organization you work for. And so I want to wish you well with the rest of this series. Um, I look forward to our next dialogue. And uh, thanks for everything you're doing to uh, leverage human capital risk management and support the Workplace Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Initiative. Yeah, absolutely. A fascinating discussion, Cal. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we'd love to have you back and continue this conversation. It's an extremely important piece of uh, the future of work is the future of people. So thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We really appreciated uh, having you today. Yeah, great to see you. And it's always fun to be with Brick.